Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne again. We're taking a look at WordPress and using WordPress.com to set up a free website. Uh, in the previous videos, we looked at just getting WordPress up and running. We looked at selecting a theme. We looked at customizing a theme. This video is starting off with the assumption that you have the WordPress site up and running. You're happy with the overall theme. You've spent a little bit of time customizing that theme to get it to be exactly what you want. Now we're going to take a look at how to set up posts and pages and what are the differences between posts and pages as you get started. Uh, keep in mind when we started off with the customization and the selection of the theme, we added in a couple dummy posts and a couple dummy pages. What we're going to do is clean all of that stuff out and start brand new. So this is the website. This is the Play Explore tech that we've been building up over time. If I go into my pages, I can see that they basically have some content in there already for me to go. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this dummy page that we created as we were selecting themes. We also had the blog post uh, that we created as we were setting things up. If I look in blog posts, I can see that I had the dummy post in there still. So I'm going to go ahead and trash that. And the thing to keep in mind is that for all of the stuff that you delete, you never really do delete things. You can go back and undo it at any point. Uh, sometimes I work with students and they'll say that they deleted a page or a post and it's totally gone. Uh, but you can go in and you can hunt down those uh, posts that you have in there. So one of the things that WordPress does really well is they'll save stuff for you. So as we think about posts and pages, it can sometimes be a little bit confusing as to what is the real difference. Primarily, a page is a static piece of content. They don't really change unless you go in and edit them specifically. Uh, an example of a page might be an about page or a services page or a contact page. So it's content that you don't really want to change that often. An example of a post is what you typically think of when you think of a blog or a blog post. It's a regularly scheduled uh page it's a regularly scheduled piece of content that regularly updates um, so there can be different types uh, of posts but for the most part you want something that's it's regularly updating um, and the regular update is happening when you post new content to your site so the easiest way for me to explain this is to take a look take a look behind the scenes at my site so I have like a main landing page that I come to um, and you know I have a blog set up on my blog section, I have the posts that load. So you can see these are the, the most recent posts that I have set up. So on the 19th, I had a post. On the 29th, on the 28th, I had posts. And these are all stacked or they're organized based upon uh, when I posted it. So they're all chronologically stacked. But then in terms of pages, I don't have a lot of pages. So I have, if I go behind the scenes on my dashboard, if I look at my posts, I have about I have 412 posts at this point, 415, well 412 posts that are published at this point. And I have a number of different topics and in areas that I'll focus on. Um, but when I look at pages, I don't have a lot of pages. And the key the thing to keep in mind is that your pages are content that doesn't regularly get updated. So I, I have a badges. Uh, page that I haven't really messed with with in a while. I'm going to most likely delete that. I have my blog page. That's where all of the posts load. I have been recently play. I've been recently playing around with a bookmarks uh, page that I'd like to take my content from other places, most notably Pinboard, and add my stuff over. But my main pages. I have a page for my home, that's the main landing page. I have a page for contacting me, that's my email address. I have a page uh, for my newsletter, for people to get out and hunt down my newsletter. Um, instead of having an about me page, what I've broken it up into after seeing a lot of my colleagues build this up, I changed it over to a start here page. And then underneath of the start here page, I have my experience and education listed. And so that's instead of the about me page that people will typically have. So if I go back to my main site, if I launch the main page, I have a main landing page where it talks about who I am and what my interests are. Um, and it's pretty basic. It's just a, a, a 
main space for people to come and learn more about me when they first land at my page. I can go to the start here section. Once again, this is something that I've started to do after seeing a number of my colleagues uh, build this up over time. And this is for people that just find out who I am. They can read more about me in a quick little blurb. Underneath of the start here, I have my education, I have my experience. And this is a lot of the common stuff that we'll see in an About Me page. We'll see a resume or a CV or some sort of work history listed. So I have my educational history. It's pretty basic at this point. I have my CV listed there. Um, I also have, as I said, my experience. I have a page just for my newsletter. I wanted to make something very clean and simple so that people can go check out, a, you know, they can subscribe to the newsletter and get in very quickly. I have a page that links out to my podcast. Uh, technically, this is a whole nother site, but not really important for our discussion now. And then I have a contact page. So the contact page, once again, very simple, not a lot to change here, links out to my different social networks, links to email me, a form area so that people can get in touch with me. Um, but for the most part, it's all pretty basic. So once again, the, the main difference between posts and pages are pages are static pages. They don't really change unless you go in and edit them. So it's not anything that's going to change regularly. A post is something that's going to be refreshed regular, uh, regularly and, uh, often. So a, a, a post in, in a website or a blog is something that's going to be updated every couple of days to every week or so um, you know some people will blog less frequently so they might blog every month or when something interests them or strikes their fancy I would still have this be a post um, so that people can keep track of you so if we're signed in to our play site here if I want to add a, a new page I can click on the pages area I have an about page I have a contact page so if I go to the about page, I can see the information that's listed there. And once again, this is your website. You can pretty much include any information that you want here. Um, they have an, a, it, you know, some starter content. My advice is to go online and see what other people put on their about page and see what sort of content they put out there and see, uh, you know, get an exemplar for what you would like to have there as well. For the contact me page, it's pretty simple you know you put your email address um, this has a a contact form that it comes loaded with you may or may not want to have a contact form set up you might want to just send out your email address so people can contact you I also think that it's generally uh, not a good idea to put um, your phone number or your address um, you know it, I've uh, it previously I would include that information online uh, Recently, within the last couple of years, I've taken that information off. I don't really include my address or my, my phone number. Um, I, I include my email address so people can get in touch with me, but I try to keep the other stuff off. Uh, increasingly, that's more and more difficult to do, but it's generally a good idea not to include a uh, specific location of you know your location or your address or your phone number. If you do want to include a phone number, to share out with other people. What I have done in the past is I will make a dummy phone number through Google Voice and then I will link or list that dummy phone number in Google Voice on my site. The nice thing about Google Voice is you can give somebody a phone number um, and that phone number will be routed out through your other spaces so you can have someone still be able to call you but if you want to block or ignore or throw away the phone number it's not a big deal. Um, so something to check out if you're working on your contact page and you still want to offer someone a phone number to call you. Let's say you're a teacher and you wanted to give it to students. You're an instructor. You want your students to be able to get in touch with you and give you a phone call. Maybe Google Voice is the better route to go with that. So once again, uh, if you look at your pages, pages are content that doesn't really get regularly updated to add a new page. Let's say I wanted to add that start here page that I discussed earlier. I can just type in start here. And then I can list content. List content as people get started or list info as they get started um, and 
edit and ed you know modify the page as I would with any other WordPress uh, or Microsoft Office uh, you know toolbar. So I can use a lot of this content here to add my pieces. I can go ahead and uh, publish this thing and send it out, and it'll be live on my site. A post is something that's as we said before regularly updated so if I'm looking at my blog posts I haven't published anything yet because I deleted all my stuff here's my trash post I'm gonna go ahead and hit start a post when you're writing up a post for your blog um, I think that it is a uh, it's a, a form of your voice it's a form of your style um, I've m commented recently that you know, I as I showed earlier, I have a little over 400 posts on my website, and I feel like just now, after writing 350, you know, almost 400 posts, just now I'm starting to figure out the the style and voice that I want to use in my posts. So my advice for for people getting up and running in in blogging and also for students is just to start writing and start posting and start adding content and sharing on your on your blog. I don't think that you can. Uh, you know, immediately start up a new blog unless you've done it before and 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 realize what sort of writer you want to be or what vo voice or style you want to have. So this applies to the layout of your post. This applies to how long your post might be, um, the titles that you use. So all of that impacts the way that you write and your style and your tone and your voice. So with titles, you might want to write something that's uh, more clickbait. Uh, that makes people want to click in and read your content or you might write titles that are very vague and abstract and and that's the sort of style or voice or, or tone that you want to have in your content that goes the same way with the amount of information you include in your post typically in my work and also as I guide my students I say a blog post should be about 300 to 500 words in length. I don't think it should be very long and very extended. I prefer to see blog posts that are bite size and you tackle a subject and you move on. Um, I've seen a lot of great uh, blog posts and, and website posts that are out there that are very long and long form. Some those work well for some people. Uh, for me, my style and when I guide my students is I typically will focus on you know, three to four to five hundred words in length. I think a blog post should have a good descriptive title to let you know what you're going to read. I think a blog post should also have images, hyperlinks, audio, video. It should have multimodal content. It should have images, video, audio, text, and other content, uh, you know, that, that might be coming out. I think it should have all of that within the post to help guide readers. Um, and so once again, this is just a blog post. The way the website is set up, WordPress will automatically stack this, so it will uh, organize these chronologically. So I'm going to stop this video here. Basically, we're looking at setting up a WordPress site, and now that we have the theme ready to go, the next step really for me is figuring out the difference between blog posts and pages. Posts are those regularly updated content. Pages is somewhat uh, less regularly updated. They're, for the most part, static. If I look at my website, as I get started, as you begin with your WordPress site, what I would suggest is that you start up with a general blog page. That's where your new posts and your new uh, th the new posts will show up. I would also add a, a contact me and an about me page. Uh, some students, some people, as they get started, they want just an about me page and they don't want to have a contact page. That's totally up to you. Um, as I said before, I took my about me page and I broke it down into a start here. And then underneath of that, I have an experience and an, and an education page. That's up to you. Um, and then the last thing that I really recommend is, you know, if you have the blog page, if you have the start here, the about me page, if you have that, uh, you know, decision made, I prefer a home page. I prefer a static page that people come to and then they can dig into your blog post. Some people want to have the, the website open up and they immediately see the most up to date posts and that content come to the front. I prefer to have this static page that people start off with 
and then they head in different directions. But that is a decision that I've made. You can make the decision about what works for you. So as you get started, get those blog posts running, you know, start to just write and figure out what sort of style and tone and voice you want to have in your posts. In terms of pages, have a home page. It can either be the it it can either load to look like your main posts and have those staggered in like this. Or it can be that main landing page, that home page that's very static. And then build yourself up an about me page or a start here page. Um, and then beyond that, if you want to have a contact page, that's fine. If not, not really necessary. So once again, we're taking a look at WordPress. This video is all about the difference between posts and pages and trying to figure out how to set all of that up so you can start to organize your site and get it to work to, uh, for you to be the sort of website that you want to have.